I'm here. I'm here. Okay, let me check if the, they can hear us. Hi, guys. If you can hear us, say, Ang guapo ni Paul. No, lagay mo na lang yes. Okay, yes. Uh, okay. Nag-alisan yung mga viewers natin nga ta. Hindi. Oh. The, the, they know me. They know me. Nag-technical talaga. Okay. No, pag, pag nangyari yung mga technical na yan, minsan because of slow internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Kaya is, tao, yan na natin. Pabalik din. So, sa pro- si protest natin sa Congress yan. <laughs> Gawa ka ng protesta sa, ano, sa internet para mapansin. Kasi, ano eh. <laughs> Ayan na, hindi na internet. O, sige. So, what you just missed is just one question. Ako na mag-rephrase, no? Somebody was asking, si SP, tanatun niya, how can the law protect me? Uh, Nakaka-enlighten to know na ang, the protection for the virtual employee or virtual professional is identical to the protection given to an ordinary employee. Yes, Di oo. Yeah, yeah. Parang parang pala. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kahit nasa ibang bansa ka. Apa, mm-hmm. adi, sabihin, kasi nandito ka sa Pilipinas, ang protection sa'yo is the same, which means... Uh, ang kliyente, pag nasa ibang bansa ang kliyente, ang ordinary employee, hindi rin siya protected. Kasi hindi abot ng Philippine law ang ibang bansa. That's ang the problem. Rin. So sa pareho lang, walang difference. The laws don't extend in between countries. Yeah, beyond. Beyond the boundary of the country. Beyond the countries, oh. yeah. Sandali ah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay, may question so, dito sa chat. May mga, may, mga nag, may mga nagtatanong dito sa chat. Eh. Ngayon lang. <laughs> yeah. Isa pa lang, yung corporation, sabi niya, eh gusto mo, eh, eh di ba, ano, kailangan ng limang tao daw to create a corporation? Yeah, yeah. You need, you need uh, a minimum of five persons to start the corporation five ano five individuals tanong ni ano LSP continue natin what are the requirements for a virtual professional to register her online services uh, in the philippines ano lang just like any professional uh, you apply for a business permit and you register with the BIR if you want to register your business no so it's like putting up any any business no any service establishment so first you go to the barangay get a barangay clearance then you go to um uh, uh city hall but before that you have to choose whether you want to organize as a corporation or a sole proprietorship so, kung sole proprietorship ka lang dahil mag-isa ka, you're, uh, you're an individual, pwede kang mag-create ng business name. You can you can have your business name registered with the DTI. Pwede rin namang walang business name. You, you use your own name. So, if you're going to use your own name, you don't have to go to the Department of Trade and Industry. You're just as, as, a, uh, as a professional, a freelance professional. So you go straight to the barangay and go to the city hall and tell them that you are a self-employed, self-employed professional. And then when you have your uh, your business permit, you register with the BIR, and that's it. You are you're you're uh, you can uh, start business now. So there's a lot of people, a lot of professionals even who don't do that. So they're part of the underground economy. No, there are a lot of uh, people like uh, like that who don't register, so they don't have official receipt, they don't pay taxes, so they're part of the underground economy. Okay, hello. Mm-hmm. Hi. So, uh, so, meron nga meron na totoo yan, may mga underground economy. So, what what would be would there be any benefit if these if these people, the virtual professionals, register? Yeah. Versus- um, if you register and you pay your taxes, uh, the benefit would be uh, first of all, you can um, you can get bigger clients. 
because bigger clients like yung mga corporate multinational they go for registered professionals they go for uh, professionals who have um, business permit and who can issue official receipts diba so th that's the that's the main benefit of uh, registering you have the opportunity you have the the possibility of getting um, a big company as a client which is true which is very very mm -hmm. true mm -hmm. an experience so yeah mm -hmm. okay. so puta na tayo sa next question ni ano okay. yeah. um sino ba to si Lia tanong niya are there taxes that i'm required to pay and how should i pay them yeah oh um well uh, if you decide not to belong to the underground economy anymore there is taxes to be paid. Number one, nang binabayaran natin is yung income tax. Oh, kasi you have to report your income. Now that's uh, uh, ano, honesty ano, uh, is the best policy dito ang ginagawa ng government. It's a self um, self uh, filled up form. So you report to the BIR the taxes that you you, you feel that you should pay no based on the formula anyway there's a form there's a formula there and based on your your annual income you will know how much taxes na dapat mo bayaran so income tax actually kahit hindi tayo nagbabayad ng income tax nagbabayad tayo ng tax because if you eat out sa fast food if you buy something makikita nyo may vat no there's a vat and the value added tax is a pass on tax no so every time we buy something na, na may VAT, we are actually paying tax. Hindi lang natin alam. So aside from VAT, uh, we pay the income tax and then there's a, uh, there's a 3% tax kung ayaw mong maging uh, VAT professional. So may option ka whether you pay the 3% tax, percentage tax, or become VAT registered. But becoming a VAT registered is more co more complicated. But a lot a lot of big companies like to hire professionals who are reg VAT registered. No, if you are VAT registered, you can pass on additional 20, 12 percent to the value of your services. But you have to remit that to the BIR. Medyo complicated nga lang. So, sa mga small professionals, they'd rather just be you know, pay the three percent. Um, percentage tax. Okay, that's great. Uh, so at least uh, there's a recording of this webinar. So if you want to mm -hmm. go back to it and ano ba yun, sinabi niya, the, mm -hmm. the webinar. And Beck is asking for specific forms. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh, ha, mga specific forms. Hindi ako familiar <laughs> sa mga specific forms eh, sa mga number ng forms sa BIR. Um, pero ang alam ko, for, for self-employed professional, ang income tax na pinapile namin ay uh, 1701. Yeah, form 1701. That's for the self-employed professionals. So, tanong ni, ano, tanong ni Joren, how can the virtual professional issue receipts? Hindi naman nakikita yung... Nung... <laughs> oh, correct. Oh, yeah. Uh, pwede ka naman mag-issue ng receipt. Uh, iba yung, iba yung pag-issue ng receipt sa delivery ng receipt or pick-up ng receipt. Pwede naman, uh, honesty system, di ba, by just being honest na gusto mo talagang magbayad ng proper tax, you can issue a receipt and then... Um, uh, scan it and then send it to the client Ganon. that's a different matter delivery and pick up of the receipt is another matter from issuing receipt analo oh yan hmm. Toto yan so dasagot na ang tanong i hope i hope no matter so let's go to the next question from um si Ann. anong legal action ang pwede namin gawin sa is ang pwedeng gawin ng virtual professional if my clients sila na hindi nagbabayad kahit may written agreement. Oh, um, yeah. So there's a... International, yeah, clients. So there are two situations. No, The first situation is kung yung client mo 
Philippine base. Mm -hmm. uh, what I mean by Philippine base, there are two things, taga Philippines, Filipino, resident of the Philippines, or kung foreigner siya, meron siyang registered business sa Philippines. Meron siyang branch. Meron siyang license to do business in the Philippines. There are some companies that are uh, foreign companies like, uh, for example, Samsung, Apple, uh, or some other companies, the foreign brands, but they have license to do business in the Philippines and they have a local branch here. So if they have a local branch, you are swerte ka because you can sue, you can file a claim, a case, in fact, against the local branch. No? Or kung Pilipino yan, kung nasan yung kanyang office or residence, you can sue them. Kasi, as, as I said earlier, ang Philippine law kasi is local. Our law, the power of our law, cannot extend beyond the boundaries of the Philippines or the territory of the Philippines. So, ang problem ng isang virtual professional is kung yung client niya, eh, walang Philippine uh, physical office. Walang Philippine physical presence. So, how do you enforce? Yan ang problema. Ang, what, the, the, the solution there is for you to go to his country and then file a case in the court of that country. Example, U.S. Your client is based in the U.S. Our law, the Philippine law, and our courts, our judicial and legal system cannot extend to the U.S. No, they have a separate set of courts and laws. So what you what you're gonna have to do, no, is to fly, buy a ticket, fly to the U.S., and then get a U.S. attorney, and then file a case in the U.S. court. Very expensive, no? But that's how, that's the, that's the procedure, eh? So, yun yung, yun yung problema. Kaya, dapat, if you're going to get uh, a foreign client, bayad mo na. Ask them to, to pay up front or to at least pay sub, something substantially or a portion of uh, your agreement before you do business. That's how you protect yourselves. Uh, get a down payment muna or get the full payment. Okay, Jomar? Okay. Yeah, ganun talaga. Tapos yun, mabagal makapuntahan yung ano, mute, unmute. Okay. <laughs> Wait for it before you click it. Anyway, thank you very much for that answer. So, alam nyo na. Huwag na kayo magsuna mga kliyente. Protect yourself. Oh. Do, going Protect up, yourself. Up front na agad para mas madali. Mm -hmm. so, Full ito, payment or partial payment. So one of the, that's one big reason not to be ashamed to ask for a partial payment up front. Kung may just may yung ilim mo, kailangan mo ng assurance. Talagang if it's a big project and you masasabit mo agad kasi magmagaling ka. Pwede. Mag-ask ka naman. Mag-ask ka na lang. Kung may ashamed ka na sa inyo. Okay. Um, I'm assuming the answer is no. Does the labor code of the Philippines recognize those... Filipino working online? Uh, yeah, as long as you are considered an employee. No? Kasi um, there are two types of virtual professional, an employee and a self-employed. No? If you are a self-employed, then you the la labor law does not apply to you. Yeah, oh, oh. Only when you are considered as an employee. That means you have an employer and you are not a self-employed or an independent professional, uh, will labor code uh, applic be applicable to you? Kasi na the point is, it is called the labor law for a purpose. Mm -hmm. or Oo. Employee. Para sa mga ano yun, sa mga employees. Uh, yeah. So, but there are, ano ah, there are uh, online professional who are employees. Depending yeah. on the arrangement. Yeah, and if you are an employee uh, under your agreement, you're an employee, then you are entitled entitled to the rights uh, and benefits and privileges of an employee under our labor code. Mm -hmm. So, to, 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 to,
think ma- mabilis lang to eh pero tingnan natin ha uh, to whom and where can we ask for legal matters in connection with working or doing business online uh, where could pwede kayong mag-ask um uh, uh, probably um uh, Department of Trade and Industry. That's uh, the government uh, entity in charge of all uh, commercial um, um, regulations yeah, for business activities. But um, there are a lot of private attorneys where you can get legal advice, uh, like me, for example. I'm a, I'm a self-employed private attorney. Tanatanatanong niya no ni Danny, follow up dyan, is there an, uh, do you know of any international body who mm. can act in between those who work online or those who do business with others online? Um, meron, pero expensive eh. Um, para sa mga big time transaction, there are international arbitration um uh, bodies, no? It's commercial arbitration. You know, yung pag may mga importation contract, ex- export and import, wherein you, you, um, pero mga mega deal yun eh. And then, so, because uh, the parties are based in different countries, no? So, they, they have this arbitration, commercial arbitration set up, no? And that can work also for online professionals, no? Theoretically, theoretically, but uh, in terms of practicality, mukhang hindi pa, unless talagang mega, mega big transaction yun, no? But the same principle works. Okay, so, follow up question lang is, uh, are there any protection we can expect if we make a transaction online? Well, oh, ah, uh, p- pede, yeah. As long as yung katransaction mo is local, Philippine-based. Mm, okay. Oo, may office, may registered office sa Philippines, whether foreign company or local company, basta meron siyang registered business dito sa Philippines or resident sa Philippines, pwede mo siyang idemanda. May protection ka. Ang wala kang protection, eh pag yung ka, ka, ka-deal mo, katransaction mo is totally no Philippine presence. Yun yung problema. So let's move out from that. Thank you very much for your questions and thank you, Dr. Paul, for the answers. Ito, iba naman. Sabi niya, do I need to apply to BIR if I'm selling online sa OLX or Sulit? Oh, um, it's up to you. But uh, under our law, every every income should be reported to the BIR. No, Every income, kasi may income tax yan, unless you're exempted. So... Um, if you're doing this as a matter of um, as a matter of ano tawag doon talagang yan na yung business mo no mayroon kang virtual store whether OLX or sa leading website if that's really your ano then you should register with the BIR pero pag yung mga ano siguro yung mga um, garage sale lang you don't you don't have to register with the BIR kasi mga ano lang yan eh mga small transaction mga hindi naman ano yan eh, ongoing business. So, ayan, if it, if it becomes a regular thing ba yun ang ibig sabihin? Yes, ito? oo. Yeah, oo. Okay. okay, so let's move on. Thank you very much for the question, Manny Lee. And thank you for the answer, Attorney Paul. Ito, uh, iba. Um, ano daw yung liability niya pag hindi siya nag-declare ng earnings as a virtual professional? Oh, uh, well, under our tax law, if you do not declare your income, your proper income, you are a tax evader. No? And when you are a tax evader, uh, there are criminal consequences. No? However, um, theoretically, yun, no? kasi uh, ang laki-laki ng underground economy sa Philippines. No? Uh, yung mga fishbowl vendor, mga balut vendor, mga hindi naman nagdi-declare ng income tax yan eh. Eh ang laki-laki ng ang laki-laki ng kita ng mga nagtitinda ng taho, palitaw, di ba? Uh, kumikita yan ng mga lalaki but they don't declare income because they are ano, 
hindi rin naman sila inahabol ng BIR, no? They're part of the underground economy. But theoretically, uh, a person who fails to declare his proper taxes and fails to pay the correct tax is liable, no? For, ano, meron pang imprisonment yan, eh. Hindi lang pinapractice. Oo. Oo. Yeah. Oo. But the the real reason kung bakit gusto mo of course uh ikaw kung gusto mo maging talagang uh, responsible citizen of course it's a good thing na talagang registered ka and you pay your proper taxes no matter how small no anyway may threshold naman yan hindi naman lahat ng income ay eh, taxable kasi may exempt there's a level of exemption pag hanggang dito lang at pag wala kang income uh, at puro losses ka, wala ka namang babayaran tax. Loss ka na nga, eh, lugi ka na nga, magbabayad ka pa ng tax. So, wala rin. So, kailangan kumita ka. The, the, the real reason why you want to register and pay income tax is uh, you cannot become big, no? As a professional, as a businessman, as a... Hindi ka pwedeng lumaki kung ano ka, kung hindi ka registered. Kasi... Ma BIR will ano eh, will find out about you. And so hindi ka ma, hindi ka lalaki forever ka na lang maliit, forever ka na lang underground economy. Good answer. Okay, very good. So um how about commissions? How about what? How are commissions treated by a business? Ah, uh, commissions. Sabi niya. Um, uh, sa tax or ano, anong klaseng, ano bang uh, question? Yung word kasi na hindi clear eh. It's the 10%, mm. the 10 percent creditable withholding tax all that I will pay or will this still be subject to income tax computation? Ah, uh, yung creditable withholding tax. Ano yun? Uh, kung ikaw yung professional, na we need to hold on, that will be part of your ano, prepaid tax yun. Parang your your client, pag nag-withhold siya ng 10% sa'yo, let's say your 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 services is worth uh, 100,000. And then your client, instead of paying you 100,000, paid you only 90,000. Because your client said that I'm going to withhold 10% of your 100,000. Pag sinabi niyang withhold, da, yung 10,000 na yun na win it hold niya, he has an obligation to remit it to the BIR. So he's doing you a favor by remitting to the BIR that 10,000 pesos. It's like you're paying your income tax in advance. So when you report your income, uh, your annual income, pag ni-report mo na yung annual income mo, isasama mo yun, yung, yung 10,000 na yun. At saka makikredit yun. Kasi pre, ano na yun eh, kumbaga... Parang ano na yun eh, prepaid income tax mo na yun eh. So you, you can benefit from that. That will be deducted from the total taxes na babayaran mo because that's already uh, paid uh, and remitted to the BIR. Thank you very much for that question and uh, the answer. Ito, susunod ko, so, kunin natin sa chat room, Sim simple lang eh. Okay. Sabi niya, I am a naturalized British citizen who I register in the UK. Mm -hmm. So this is from the chat room. Who's asking? Francisco. Francisco, if you live abroad and doing VA example, naturalized as British citizens, do I register in the U UK? Yeah, of course. Uh, you're, you live abroad, eh? So you... You register in your home country. <laughs> so, ito mas, ito ano, masyadong specific. Di ko alam kung kaya kung tanong yun. Ang dami eh. So, um, nagmihingi siya ng, ano, ways to eliminate or decrease taxes paid mm. uh, mm -hmm. virtual professional. Online professional, sorry. Yeah. Ways to decrease taxes. Um, first of all, um, mag-itemize, ano ka, uh, accounting, itemize uh, tax reporting. Kasi pag nag-itemize ka, 
ibig sabihin uh, hindi ka gagamit nung ano nung nung 40% uh, optional standard deduction it is possible na liliit yung kita mo pag marami kang expenses so that's one form para limit yung taxes mo if your expenses your actual uh, operating and business expenses is really that high you know so you can shift to itemized um, reporting so that uh, liliit yung ano yung income na na maano sa yo and another way is to form a corporation kasi ang corporation ano yan fixed na 30% income tax but a corporation has more allowable deduct, deduct deductions no mas maraming pwedeng i-deduct ang corporations than an individual than as than a uh, than a so, uh, sole proprietor so that's one one way is to um, form a corporation and then um, try to uh, report uh, all your expenses such that uh, your income would be small ganun yan it's it's actually proper accounting tinas so, good proper accounting talaga Tama naman mm-hmm. another way is um ano po ba yun? Um, become um, yeah, mara- very complicated na yung iba eh. Uh, may rap- baka hindi maintindihan if I'm going to share it. But there are ways to get um, lesser tax um, kasi may mga taxes na ano eh, na, ba, taxes on dividends. Mm. Yun. So, mas maliit yun. Either zero or 15%. So, may mga ways to ano to decrease tax. Taxes on dividends. Mm. Maybe so, ano? to the next question. Sabi niya, okay. meron, bang tax dedu- meron bang tax deductions for those who engage in the stock market? Tax deduction? Mm. Uh, uh, no, I, I don't think so. There is... Um, what we call a final tax. Parang, di ba pag may deposit ka sa banko, yung interest, tinatax na kaagad ng banko, makikita mo doon yung interest mo, kumita, kumita ka sa deposit mo, pero babawasan na kaagad niya ng final withholding tax. Ganon din sa stock market. Yung tax, yung earnings mo doon from sale, automatic dinididak na nila. So, parang automated na yung payment ng tax mo. Any earnings mo sa, sa stock trading or stock market, hindi mo na kailangan i-report yan sa income tax return mo. So it's, uh, and then, mas mababa yung tax doon sa stock market. So that's one way to reduce tax. You you engage in the stock market. Okay. Hey, so tanong niya, um, meron bang tax deductions available for those who are involved in the real estate as a salesperson? Tax. As a salesperson, um, he means broker. I'm not sure. Oh yeah. Oh, parang professional. Ano rin yan eh? Whether you're a broker, you're a lawyer, you're you're uh, an online professional, virtual professional. All 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 of us are professionals. Isa lang ang tawag sa atin sa sa BIR language or sa BIR jargon. We are all self-employed. Mm-hmm. So as self-employed, we use the same form, 1701, in terms of uh, income tax. So kung ano man yung pwede kong madidak, yun rin ang pwede niyong madidak, which is yung um, uh, personal deduction, tsaka kung may dependents ka, if you have children, if you're married, so iba rin ang deduction dyan. And then yung mga ano mo, yung uh, you can, you can um, go to the... Uh, you can choose to have optional standard deduction. So, automatic na yun. Wala nang audit-audit yun. 40%. 40% uh, of your revenue eh, hindi na taxable kasi part na yun ng operations mo. Only 60% will be subject to tax. So, that's actually the simplest way. Kung mag-isa ka lang tapos namamahalan ka magbayad ng bookkeeper or accountant, just resort to the optional standard deduction. OSD. It's in your tax form, actually. <laughs> yeah. Ito ba puro tax ang question dito? Hindi naman ako. Hindi <laughs> naman ako CPA. 
Wala kayong legal questions. Ito, panay. Uh, legal questions na lang. Hindi natin kung meron pa. Hindi, mag-good night pa tayo. Ito, si Antoinette may question. Tignan mo, kung pang-tax nga. Hindi, hindi, hindi siya pang-tax. No? It's about a corporation. No? Antoinette is asking, isn't there, isn't it there um, a startup capital for corporation? What about virtual professional services? How much is the lowest amount? Well, for corporations, no, theoretically, theoretically, for corporation, the lowest, no, um, capital na ina-accept sa SEC ay 5,000 pesos. You can start a corporation with just 5,000 pesos. Now, 5,000 realistically might not be enough. You know, kasi the corporation code was, uh, kailan ba ito? Yeah. It's, a, it's an ancient law. So, 5,000 pesos might not really be practical. So, but yun yun eh. That's theoretically, you can start a corporation with only 5,000 pesos. For virtual professional services, there's no low, low amount. It's up to you. But how do you want to capitalize your business? There's no um, minimum. Siguro, ano, maglalagay ka na lang doon para medyo respectable, res respectable naman yung business mo. Maglagay ka naman ng siguro kahit at least 5,000. Oh, yan. Yan ang sagot sa tanong ninyo. <laughs> I think we ran out of questions uh, about uh, uh, legal questions at least na. But everybody's concerned with taxes so maybe... Yeah, oo nga. You guys are also uptight about it. <laughs> there uh -oh. is a recording with the friends ni Attorney Paul. Sila, ano, sila Mark and Michael. It's uh, There are two CPAs. You best get to that recording. We did it like two weeks ago, I think. Or one week ago. So, go get that. Para makita niyo ang sagot sa mga tanong niya. Pare-pareho lang naman yung mga tanong niyo. It's, it's mm, an essential. Yeah. Yung access. Parang ganun lang. Ang sagot lang naman doon, yes. <laughs> Maybe they want to hear it from the from attorney po, which kanina pa namin sinasabi. Yes, you should. Okay? Um, if it's your constant source of income, yes, you should. Now, sabi mo, sabi nga ni attorney Paul, hindi ang fishbowl vendor, hindi. So, it depends if you want to like a visual vendor or you want to grow when you want a bigger company. Ito, ito, ano, last question, hindi related sa virtual professional. <laughs> pero, <laughs> pero hindi tax. Okay. Ay, tax pa rin. So, ne, never mind, never mind. Tax pa rin eh. Mm. So, I think we're at the end of the webinar. Thank you so much, Tony Paul, for giving us your precious time answering tax questions and legal questions. <laughs> Si Rosemary daw may legal question. Sige nga. Si Rose, si Rosemary daw may legal questions. Answer na ba daw natin? Wala eh. Wala dito. Hindi ko makita ka na mo, Rosemary. Baka siya sa mga, ano, isa sa mga nag-question uh, doon sa... Pag ako nakakita na ng word na taxation dyan, kakagating ko kayo. <laughs> um, oh. ano... Ngayon pala so, pumapasok yung mga ibang question. Tinatanong niya una naman yung ano, eh, sole proprietor, partnership, etc. Et Sabi niya, mm -hmm. it's better to start a corporation and register it with the SEC. Will it be harder mm -hmm. than sole proprietorship or partnership in terms of requirements and people? Yung pag-register ng ano, corporation versus sole prop. Yun lang naman. Oh, ako ay, ay ang advice ko, if kung meron kang five individuals who can form a corporation with you, big corporation na lang. Corporation is the best. Mm, the only problem is you don't have ano, five people. In, ang take ko naman dyan is start, stop thinking about how hard it is to form the corporation. Kasi mm. mabilis lang yun. Between your lifetime, isang beses mo lang siguro gagawin yun. And mm. Mas, matagal, mas maganda pa yung protection na mabibigay ng corporation versus yung single prop. And mm -hmm. lifetime na yung protection na yun. Yeah. And for people like me, don't form. Ibayaran mo si attorney Paul para i-form para sa'yo. <laughs> Kasi yun ang ginawa ko. Nabayad ako. Oh, yeah. Hindi mo kailangan si kasuhin yung corporation mag-isa. Pagawa mo yan sa ibang, sa professional. Para you concentrate on what you do best, di ba? Yeah. Kanya-kanya tayo ng expertise. Oh, kasi kanya-kanya tayo ng expertise. We have the CPAs here, we have attorney Paul here. 
you do your virtual work or your online online selling when it comes to forming corporations pagawa mo na lang sa kanila it will save you time and stress diba? yeah oh yeah si Antonet nagtatanong is it okay kung all relatives daw yeah oo oh naman ang corporation oh naman syempre <laughs> dapat trusted mo na eh. tama lang so thank you very much uh, yes Tony. yes Mm-hmm. Um, congratulations! You have a successful first webinar, including yeah, it's my technical. first webinar. <laughs> <laughs> first technical <laughs> problem. Technical <laughs> problem. Tila mo mamae sa recording wala in technical problem. Binubura namin. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, everybody. I encourage you to listen to the webinar again, so you'll be enlightened. You heard from the CPAs. Now you heard from Attorney Paul Sangalam, uh, UP and government and <laughs> ano ba yung organization na head ka sa gobyerno na high tech naman ah uh, right. ano dati dati national labor relations commission you know, national labor relations commission dati siyang head so very heavy very heavy credentials so thank you so much for honoring us uh, maliliit the virtual professionals and we we wish you well and god bless sa inyong career as a lawyer lawyer for thank god you. thank you thank you so much guys thank you attorney paul thank you everyone for asking yeah. questions and listening god bless thank you then god bless thank you thank you very much bye hi okay Contact details ni Attorney Paul. <laughs> Contact <laughs> details. If, i-flash if mo ulit. I-flash mo lang. Screen. Oh, sige, sige. I-flash mo lang. Oh, okay. flash lang. Okay. Pat nakuha ko na. Pati ka na mag... Ay, ito. Flash. Yan ang email ko. Ayan, di, di pa lumalabas. Relax, relax. Lumabas na? Yan na? Wait a minute. Ayan na. Ayan na. Sa so, dalihan. Wait for me to copy it before I you let go. Okay, you can go. Thank you so much. I hope you're going to Okay, yeah. Nice. Give me sa anak mo. Success. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good evening. Bye, everyone. Jamar, mag-sign up na ako. Ah, oh, sige. Ako nang bahala. Bye, sige. Salamat ha. Maraming salamat. Okay, okay. Hello, guys. So, this is Jamar signing off. You're gonna get a copy of the webinar replay using the same link you joined in, but you're probably gonna get a yung version of Naputol. You have to wait for us to assemble the webinar if using its putol na parts para maganda na wala putol na parts but um if you're looking for it just go to the Joma Hilario virtual careers in the facebook group it's going to be there and we will permanently put it in the internet so anybody who has questions about law and virtual careers um uh, will be able to see the webinar the funny thing here however is all of you guys are asking about taxation <laughs> which is supposed to be a question to be given to the uh, CPAs or certified public accountants, which means might we might get another CPA as guest again. Para pa ulit ulit nila sa kuten. Paano ba yan magfile ng tax? Well, we will. I'll, I'll ask. I'll ask somebody to actually show you how to file taxes, which is really boring. So I probably won't be there. <laughs> we'll make it a vi- we'll make it a video. <laughs> so paano kayo ba kapag file ng tax? Kung yun ang gusto nyo. But I hope you appreciate that we got a lawyer up here. To help you out yes just go uh go to his uh, facebook page is uh facebook.com slash legal coach i trust him okay he's one of my schoolmates at the same time in college so he's also a, a follower of bo sanchez so we have a good advocate you know? that's what counselor means authority means uh in the person of apollo sangalang okay thank you so much for joining us and do join us on monday uh we have another webinar uh, for you and coming up actually is a three-day super mega 
webinar day. I will, will, we will announce to you kung kailan yung three-day webinar. We will be teaching you lots of brand new stuff and uh, answer your questions. Okay? For those who have questions regarding virtual careers and uh, the instant virtual skills, just stay put and Nikki will answer you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, God bless. This is Jomar Hilario. And I didn't introduce myself kanina. Okay lang yun, di ba? Okay lang sa inyo. But you want to know more about Jomar Hilario, just go to jomarhilario.com. Or just go to Jomar Hilario Virtual Careers. And you will find all my other students who are learning how to work from the internet. And for those looking for, ano, pang boost ng belief. Yun pang, hindi ako makapaniwala. Mayroon palang virtual career. Diba ganyang klase? Just go to John Marhilario Virtual Careers na Facebook page. And I will be posting to you a list of free resources na pwede nyo puntahan. Lalo na sa mga beginners, no? You might be in the webinar and you're first-timer and you don't know much and you want to know ano ba yung pwede kong maintindihan dyan? I can give you a list of all my videos who are out there on the internet. Also, my podcast, which is, again, Q&A videos, the very short. And also going to give you the three most important videos you should have watched if you're looking for an orientation. Three, three videos lang. Pero three hours yun. Kasi one, one, hour, one hour video. It's also free. And I'll also give you... Uh, Yun, yun lang, yun lang na may fix sa inyo. So just go to facebook.com slash um, groups slash John Marilario Virtual Careers if you really wanna get involved and find out ano ba yan? Ano ba itong nakikita ko ng virtual careers na yan? Okay? So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, please do pray for the future plans this year. Uh, it's just the middle of the year. Maraya po pwede mangyari. Let's, uh, let's go, go, go. Okay? And start transforming our lives. Okay. Salamat. This is Jomar Larry signing off, but Nikki is going to be there to answer your questions.